Good evening, friends. It's Alexor again, and I have another new fancy build. And actually, it's very similar to uh, the Blood Warlock I was making, but this has a nice, interesting addition. First of all, this is a 180 corruption monolith. And we're dealing with it just fine, no problem whatsoever. So you can do high corruption very easily with this build. As you see, it's the Lady Anthrax, right? Poison Lady. Turns the fissure into a poison. We have the Vendoring Spirits running around. And this applies a ton. A ton of poison stacks to enemies. And it does one key thing. This explosion, did you just see that? That green poison explosion that just went out. That is a passive from our passive tree thingy. It has a 12 second cooldown. There's a lot of damage, so this is one of the main main damage dealers. See, there it is again. Cleaned everything just fine. Absolutely insane. AoE damage. Even the single target DPS is super easy, like um, Orobis, I was kicking easily to, to this corruption. Again, I don't think this can go to any sort of super high corruption like 1000 or something again the game is not designed around this so i don't care if it can't do that but um 200 freedom corruption i think should be just fine with the dominions you gotta obviously look a little bit into the damage like it take a little bit longer to kill obviously and you gotta dodge the damage the great thing about this the Hungering Souls also is you have a kill threshold of 15%, so anything under 15% you just kill right away. That's super nice. And with the Profane Veil, it also gives you more damage over time. So this is not just to evade. It is great to evade, but it's also in like maximizing the damage. So this is just great on all levels. Like, look at how fast this Ospreys do dice. You can tell we... And then we just do the Hungering Souls at the end and the 15% kill threshold instantly kills that loser. Right? Very great, great stuff. So... Um, this also doesn't have many uniques. Just the regular ones, pretty much. We're gonna go buy items later. So it's not too expensive of a build, but I wouldn't call it a budget build because you... Kind of have to have the exemptionist to even survive. But let's go over the skills first. Now it's pretty similar. These two are pretty similar to the existing Blood Warlock. Um, but we're not using Soul Feast or anything like that. Or even Harvest. We are going all into Poison. Hungering Souls. Again, they are mostly to apply Poison stacks. And sort of the, the thing you can just shoot all the time, right? Like all these, these heads apply poison stacks to the enemy, that's just very nice. And the key thing is this, Reaper's Gaze. 15% kill threshold. You want to have this because then when your boss or your Oribus is below 15%, you just shoot these heads at him once in this cone, he's dead. Easy game, easy life. Um, everything else is mostly about damage over time, as you can tell here. Um, I might even respec some things and go more into this. If you can put extra points of hungering souls on your on your items then max out the damage over time this is already enough poison chance and the mana cost you also you don't even need to have this you can also go more into this you can play around with these whatever fits yourself better i will have the build link below where i maximize this then in the description in the in the planner probably gonna max one max this one out and keep this at free that's probably better the mana cost is not really that relevant but yeah, that's the, that's the main idea. That's what it does. We don't care about anything else. We just want to have more projectiles. We want to have to kill threshold, damage over time, and poison. That's what it does. Very simple. The Wandering Spirits. Now, they are fancy as fuck. Because necrotic damage is converted to poison damage. Very nice. We They, they last longer. We do more um, larger radius. Cooldown recovery, that's important. You want to cast this often. 
Yeah, movement speed, and this one that's just shoot the spectral putrid sense, so they shoot poison darts at the enemies. The the main reason for one of these is, or pretty much you can tell, damage over time, damage over time, damage over time, damage over time. Why do we have four damage over time skills? Now this is one pass if we go deeper into this later, but this is the key thing. Wild tide in the warlock tree, because when you cast a damage over time skill, that's what we have these four. And enemies within 50 meters have a combined 25 or more stacks of poison. You gain poison overload for 12 seconds. And it gives you 4% poison penetration per stack of poison on the target. So that's a lot of damage. And um, you also shred poison resistance. But the key thing is the Defiling Nova you cast. This is the exploding thing you guys saw. That Nova, that huge poison thingy. Um, it says 1900 damage here. It's actually way more when you have the stacks on it. Currently, I don't have them, so it goes up to like 10k or more and applies a lot of stacks. So this is why we have all the damage over time skills. So the key thing is really, you just keep casting your Fissure, then you keep casting your Vendoring Spirits, and they will all apply poison stacks. You can even cast um, these on top as well. This will all apply poison stacks to the enemies. And once they are over 25, you just have to cast any... Poison, uh, any damage over time skill to shoot that Nova out. I can't do it yet because here is there is no enemies here. But you, you basically just what you do, you, you fissure and you're wandering spirits. Then you run around a little and you just keep casting the, get the name, hungering souls all the time. You just cast them and at some point uh, the fighting Nova just explodes and you get all that poison penetration. This does a lot of damage and it buffs all the other ones. So... The main idea with all these skills is really to apply poison stacks as much as possible. That's what we do, okay? And they have to be damage over time skills, so we actually um, trigger the Nova. Now the Fissure, for any one of you who don't know, is actually basically a fire and necrotic skill. So the Fissure itself on the ground, when enemies stand on that, they usually gain fire damage and ignite. And the Spirits, they do necrotic damage. With the torment, right? You can see this here. Tormenting spirit, necrotic damage over time. So when we go with this, the value of defilement, we turn the fire and the ignite into a poison chance, but the spirits, they still do necrotic damage. That's important to know. Only the thing, only when they stand on this green, this green area. That is what does poison damage. The spirits that shoot out, they do necrotic damage. And you can tell by the colors. Green is poison and that light teal blue green thing that is necrotic damage. We know that, right? That's just interesting and important to know um, how this plays together. Now with this one, actually I just realized <laughs> I, had, I was trying something. I had the skill wrongly. Um, yeah, I was, I was also testing Soul Feast with the Torment. We don't care about the Torment, the necrotic damage, and the spirits very much. That's not relevant to us. What we want is down here. We're gonna go this route. This, it says fire here, but this is converted to poison because of this. So this works even though it says fire. Spell damage with high chance to stun per ignite chance or poison chance in this case, and then more poison damage and more poison damage and crit chance. So we go down this. Again, below, um, click the link in the description. In the build planner, I have it set up correctly. I was testing this before I made the video. Sorry, I forgot about this. Got to change it. It's still a lot of damage, as you could tell. So even though we spec it wrongly, we still did 180 corruption, no problem. So you only imagine what this can do um, when we go higher and set it up properly. But yeah, really what this does is it also applies poison stacks as much as possible to enemies. Um, and that's, that's the main idea of the curse. Poison damage and a damage over time skill, because we do a lot of damage with damage over time. Then we have Profane Veil, which is, as I said, due to this scorn node, damage to cursed while concealed. This buffs our damage over time because Cathonic Fissure also curses enemy enemies, right? So this increases our damage over time against cursed enemies also a lot. This is great. And we have a bigger area. And this one is also a key thing. When a wandering spirit is revealed inside Profane Veil's area, the spirit deals more damage in a larger area for the rest of the spirit's duration. Additionally, for each spirit, you gain ward per unkept necrotic resistance. 
So basically, when you want to cast your... You, you do this. This is basically the combo you said. Right? You see? You cast your Fissure. You cast your Wandering Spirits. And then you cast your Profane Veil. Now, I was sitting at 7,000 Vault at this point, And it goes down to 5k again. So this is how you also keep your survivability up. You don't take damage while in Profane Veil. And it increases damage on the cursed enemies. So that's just insane. By the way, you can still also go for this. Because of this node. Torment is more damage to Poisoned. But in my testing, this one did more damage. You can play around with this as well, because this gives more damage for unkept necrotic resistance. This does more poison damage. It's both fine, all right? Um, both works, but I kind of like the more poison on it, because this is a poison thing, so we focus on poison. Very simple. Nothing crazy. Anyway, uh, Profane Veil, yes. Also, everything else is classic. You move faster. Uh, mana cost, mana cost. And this one is the Forked Tongue, so you have another one that homes against enemies. Very simple. This is really nothing crazy. Profane Veil, mostly to dodge. Same with Transplant. Transplant is always the same. There's really only one way you build Transplant, isn't it? You go with Bone Armor. Do I really need to go into detail how this works? Cast speed, cost less. You gain armor and take less damage. Armor effect is better. It lasts longer. And then over here you also cast the Curse. You don't need this, but it's a nice addition. This one is key. Haste. So if you do it right, you basically have... You bone armor for four and a half seconds, I believe. Then you have five seconds cooldown. You have to wait before it works again. See, it doesn't work now, but you gain the frenzy. So you gain a lot of bone armor every 10 seconds from transplant. That's very simple. Two ex escapist skills. Everything else is to apply poison stacks and do damage with them. Very simple spell-wise. And I said the, the main combo that does the most damage is your fissure, your spirits, and then you go into profane veil. To maximize the damage and then you can start hitting with your hungering souls to get the threshold passives are a little bit different for the acolyte we put actually more into the acolyte here especially this poison enemies on kill and poison resistance poison damage increased a lot actually 40 percent that's quite a lot so usually you don't even go that far in the acolyte but we want to have to poison then the warlock very simple it's actually the base frame for the Warlock is always the same. Damage over time and health. Intelligence, mana per intelligence. Armor health, and especially this one, ward per second. Withering chance, withering is always nice. Intelligence, vitality, always. And then the only difference, as you can tell, only two more things I picked here. Poison chance, and this is again the Vile Tide, as I said before. The one that does a lot of damage, and it really is the sort of the damage dealer. You apply a lot of poison stacks. It says you need 25 or more stacks of poison, then you gain poison overload, which is an ailment on you. For 12 seconds, and for these 12 seconds, you grant 4% poison penetration per stack of poison on the target. And you sometimes put hundreds of stacks on the target. And the first 30 stacks also reduce poison resistance even more. So basically, just poison keeps hitting hard. And the key thing, though, is the Defiling Nova you cast automatically. So you see when the Defiling Nova is exploding, then you're also doing much more poison damage at that point. So this thing is great. You need this. This one sucks. Basically, just gives more. It spreads when you use potions. I never use potions, so fuck that. Vessel of Chaos, very simple. Increased damage over time. And more damage over time per overload. See, even more. 3% in this case. Aim and overload. Even better. Then the Lich has a bunch of interesting things. You put 10 into these. Intelligence, Mana, Region. Then you go... Increased damage over time, 56%. And then, increased poison damage, 56%. Increased poison duration, 56%. And then each points you have lying around, so you put in Crippling Inside, that gives you more Int, which is also scaling your damage. Very simple. The Lich has a lot of poison stuff. That is good for us. We use that a lot. Very simple. Now, for the items. This one. Plague Barrel Staff. You you need that. I would say you need that. Otherwise, the damage is a bit lacking. It's a rare one to get, so this is not easy if you don't have it. The build is not as strong. You can, of course, put poison damage on like a staff or anything, and you can play around with um, catalysts. But this one has, see, 74 increased damage over time and the spell damage as well. 200% chance to poison hit, and I think this is pretty maxed. Yeah, 220. Okay, it could be even better. 100% chance to inflict Plague. Plague is another 
It says here, Plague deals po poison over time and spreads to enemies around the target, but it does not stack. So basically it just spreads poison even further, but it's no stacking. Poison penetration with Plague. I mean, this could be much better. See, it could go to 200%, but if you have a better roll than I do, congrats. 17% more damage over time against enemies afflicted with Plague, which you will have a lot of. All right. So um, they gain more damage over time. Actually, almost a max roll. Blind attackers, cool. Current health drain per second. Irrelevant. We don't really care about that. That's fine. But this is very good. Since it's draining health, we also want to run a low life build with Exanctionist and Lasters of the Living and even the Bone Claim of Barboot. You don't have to go this route, but the one ward per second per 3% uncapped necrotic resistance is just so great. If you don't know what this does, the last one on this on this helmet, one ward per second for 3% uncapped necrotic resistance. That's this one. You, you want to max necrotic resistance, then you gain a lot of ward. This is how I'm sitting at 5,500 ward comfortably all the time. And if I do the Wandering Spirits into this, you can tell I gain even more ward. And if I go for through more of them, actually is more. Like if you move more, then it's better. So uh, yeah, this is why this helmet is just very, very good for the warlock in general. If you don't have it, just go with intelligence and uh, armor and your res resistances, or maybe even damage over time. And I think you can put this on the helmet. I'm not sure. But and that's your basic scaling. Damage is with Damage over time. Uh, poison damage or damage over time, yeah. There it is. Damage over time. Poison damage. Necrotic damage still also affects the spirits of your fissure, so this also gives more damage. Spell damage, damage over time. Damage over time. This doesn't have anything. <laughs> this was mostly for the war decay and resistances. You want to get resistances up as well. This is a key thing if you have this, the Sickening Adorned Immortal Idol. 81% um, increased damage over time while you have an ailment overload. So basically when you get your Vile Tide, this one, right? You gain an ailment overload when you have enough stacks, like 25 stacks or more of poison on enemies. Basically in big... No, it doesn't matter. Either in big groups or you put a lot on the enemy boss. Then you get 80% more damage over time. So if you have this... Maybe even have it twice. This is great. I don't put it twice because the rest of it is health. I want to be more tanky, especially in higher corruption. Um, so you can scale either with necrotic resistance, which gives you, in this case, ward, so you are you survive better, or damage over time, or poison damage. Personally, I think damage over time is better because your Kafanic Fisher still does torment on the enemies. Right? And Torment is a necrotic damage over time. So with damage over time regularly, both still gain the buff. If you just go for poison damage, then your Kephanic Fissure does less damage. So I think just going for Dot generally is better in my eyes. But yeah, you can play around with it what works. If you have this, for example, that has necrotic resistance on it, like this belt is the best I could find, really. Um, poison damage, necrotic damage, health and necrotic resistance. It's awesome. This one is cool. The Fireball's Persistence, if you have it, because it has Necrotic Resistance, War DK Threshold, a lot of Int, and Armor. But it's mostly defensive, doesn't do any damage, but the War DK and the Necrotic Resistance is very nice. Keeps you keeps you very much alive. So you gain a lot of Ward, and this is very powerful. Same thing here, War DK Threshold again. Just makes you survive longer. Um, same thing with the Last House of the Living, War DK Threshold in the Implicit. You just want to have a lot of ward, so you are tanky, especially in higher corruption. Frailty on hit physical resistance, also nice. You want to keep your resistances mostly capped. I don't even have this yet, because uh, lightning sh still kicks me pretty hard. Also void. You want to look into this. You can also do this with blessings, right? If you go to get the right blessings on the right bosses, you can look this up. You can gain your void or your fire resistance from the blessings, so you can put more in your items. But that's pretty much it. You need this for sure. And the exemption is, you don't necessarily need the Lancers of the Living, but they make you a lot tankier. So I, I would want to have it. And this is also not necessary, but you gain a lot of ward if you go into Necrotic Resistance. 
Um, but again, you don't have to. So, but this is also why I don't call it a budget build, because if you want to go for higher corruption with this build, you kind of need these four uniques. You don't need the set item. It's just cool. Um, but the uniques are kind of necessary. Okay. Idols, very simple. As I said, this one is cool if you have it. Increased damage over time. Again, if you have the ailment overload from your Vile Tide passive point, and this, this Nova explodes, you gain a lot of increased damage over time, and of course 20% almost wall retention. Everything else is health or resistance. Health, wall retention, health. Poison chance on spell hit, also nice. Health, stun avoidance, health, resistance, health. And yeah, bleed on hit, also cool, could we do damage over time, so it doesn't matter. And void resistance, I wanted to have this maxed. Idols are always simple with the Acolyte. It's just health. <laughs> <laughs> with this one exception over here this one but yeah that's it as i said i'm gonna show you in a second if we go here as i said here 179 corruption so i'm not lying you see it frigid hinterland great name by the way and yeah it's very simple what you do as oh and mage let's just kick his ass right away you call him you do your fissure you do your spirits and you go into profane veil if he doesn't dodge it you see, the more stacks you put him in, the more damage he does, and uh, the more damage he gets. See, it gets slow towards the end, and then you just keep casting your Q, and he's just super dead. I didn't even take much damage there. Transplant, really. To dodge. And let's see if we can actually get our... That's the Poison Nova, see? And now we have the Damage Overload, it says it down here. Poison Overload. Poison Penetration. This wasn't really clever because now there are no enemies. But you do this in a fight. You apply all these stacks with your skills. Go into a profane veil. And actually cast it again. If you saw it. And just keep casting your hungering souls. Until it procs again. There it is again. See, everything is green and full of toxicity. Toxicity. Everything is dead and dying and defiling. And that's what we want, right? Very great build if you want to look for something poison because poison is still pretty bad in this game, sadly. But with the warlock, we can actually make it happen because the warlock is the damage over time lady. So let me know what you think of this one in the comments below and like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Again, description for the correct <laughs> correct build is in the the link for the build planner for the correct build is in the description. That was difficult to say. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next video.